Remember, these guys are the ones that are controlling the secret. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. I want you to listen to this verse very carefully. That day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. You believe in that? Say amen. amen. And that man of sin, who is that? It's the Antichrist. That man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is, is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth where? In the temple of God. What is the temple of God? The only proper interpretation of this verse is the human body. Because God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, does He? The only way God would ever enter this room is if He walked in with you. Amen. Well, it's deep, isn't it? So the man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to reign as God where? Right inside the hearts of human beings in this earth. That is the ultimate form of demon possession. They've taken over mankind, showing himself that he is God. Remember that. What is that? DNA. Okay? And we've only known, we've only known of this general structure of DNA since the 1950s. Okay? But I'm going to show you something that goes back about 4,000 years. Take a look at it. What does that look like to you? Dennis, what does that look like to you? Looks like DNA, doesn't it? Entwined snakes. Looks just like DNA, doesn't it? Remember, this conspiracy is not just men. It's devils. It's the devil, who Ezekiel said is wiser than Daniel. This goes back to ancient Samaria. Does that look like DNA to you? How about this one? A Peruvian textile from 300 years before Christ. Wow. Secret's been around a long time, hasn't it? You've seen the caduceus? In his, what is that, his right hand? It's DNA. And it's been around thousands of years. The devils knew the secret. This showed up on Time Magazine. Solving the mysteries, the mysteries of DNA. And there, depicted on the cover, is Adam and Eve. And what is that behind them? It's a tree. Think about it. Are we getting close? Okay. See that? That is a New Age Eastern mysticism idea called Kundalini. Kundalini says that at the base of your spine is a coiled serpent. And if you go through the proper in, uh, initiations and rituals, like emptying your mind, channeling familiar spirits, or receiving an, an initiation pat on the forehead from a guru... Think about that one. Then you will receive kundalini. The serpent will then begin to crawl up your backbone. Now remember what we learned last night about the backbone. How many bones? 33. Why do masons use that number? Think about it. It's a number for them for illumination. When the serpent winds his way up your spine and enters your forehead... You receive enlightenment, and you are one with the universe. You're one with everything. How many of you remember a rock group called Sticks? How many of you know what the name Sticks is? <laughs> a rock group. Who said that? Get out. You're not one with anything. <laughs> okay. The river Styx is the river that flows through hell in Greek mythology. And this, the rock group Styx had a song called The Serpent Rising. 
The lyrics are, in the abyss of space, from the center of time, a Superman race. Think about it. Moves the serpent to climb. The secret revealed when you leave your cave is a glory of thunder and life from the grave. The serpent is rising and coiling in your spine, bringing you light from the depths of your mind. Who inspired the song? <coughs> Familiar spirits. Okay? Now, I was in Michigan. I drove past this billboard. I said, stop! I got to take a picture of this. The Michigan Masons, in trying to recruit people, their slogan was, share the secret. So I'm going to. <laughs> they said I could. So I'm going to tell you what the secret of Freemasonry, the New Age, I call it New Age because it rhymes with sewage, <laughs> the New Age movement, and everything that the devil does not want out, I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay? Down here at the bottom, next to their square and compass, which tells you the secret, says, Masons, live better. Now, Masonry is all about the ascension of mankind. Remember last night when I told you about evolution and that evolution is dangerous? Masonry supports evolution because Masonry says that mankind and the New Age movement says that mankind is about ready to enter his next stage of evolution where mankind will be more than human. We will be transhuman. We will be super men. We will be a divine race. We will be as gods. Thank you. So the slogan, live better, you, do you understand that? Now, if you work at Walmart or go to Walmart, you're not going to hell. Okay? We live in this world, but we are not of this world. Can I hear you say amen? Now, <laughs> masonry is all about rebuilding Solomon's temple. Now remember, the Bible says that the temple is what? The body. So masonry then secretly is about rebuilding the human being. Okay? So, there in the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C., they have a slogan on the inside that says, Masonry builds its temples where? They're telling you the secret. Okay? Now, has anybody ever seen this symbol before? This is on the Masonic Temple in McAllister, Oklahoma. A pastor took me there and he said, Pastor Mike, you've got to see this stuff. It's a cross with a rose on it. Okay? It is called the Rosicrucian concept or the Rosicrucian doctrine. The Rosicrucians was a secret society that sort of arose in Europe just prior to the time that masonry was really taking root, and masonry adopted Rosicrucian thought into its, into its teachings. So masonry and Rosicrucianism are linked together. Here is what Rosicrucian doctrine says. It says, The manner and the means by which the present day man is what? Transformed into the divine Superman. Remember what we just saw that song from Styx? The Superman race, the divine race. This symbol, Christian Rose Cross, shows the end and aim of what? And you thought it was just that we came from monkeys. Evolution is not about where we came from, but where they say we're going. That's why it's dangerous. Human evolution, the solution of the world mystery, man's past evolution present constitution, and particularly the secret of his future development. What is man going to be turned into? We're going to find out. 
Pike said it is for each individual Mason to discover the secret of Masonry by reflection upon its symbols and a wise consideration and analysis of what is said and done in the work. Masonry does not inculcate her truths. She states them once and briefly or hints them, perhaps darkly, or interposes a cloud between them and eyes that would be dazzled by them. Seek and ye shall find knowledge and truth. So that's what we're going to do. Albert Pike associates this great secret with the discovery of the alchemist's philosopher's stone. The Philosopher's Stone is the concept in alchemy and Rosicrucianism that basically is the key, listen to this, to immortality. Man can live forever if he discovers the Philosopher's Stone. The very first Harry Potter book that was written was called Harry Potter and the, Al or the Philosopher's Stone. In America, it was called the Sorcerer's Stone. So millions of teenage boys and girls know more about the secret than you do. And our public school said, oh, these kids got to read this book. We're just glad that they're reading something. <laughs> well, what if they were reading Playboy? <laughs> Amen? Amen? It's the same garbage. Now, God said, Mike, you want to know the secret? Yeah, well, yeah, I want to know the secret. God said, we're going to study a word in the Bible. I like to study words in the Bible because I think the Bible has words. And they mean something. Right? God knows how to talk. And God knows how to talk in English. Amen? Mm. So I said, God, what word? And he said, secret. Let's study the word secret. And I'm going, cool. That makes sense, doesn't it? You want to know what the secret is? Let's look at the word secret. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are what? Revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made where? David said when I was made in secret. And what did we discover about that last night? The secret of the womb is where David was made. So the secret has something to do with how David was made and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. For God shall bring every work into judgment with what? Every secret thing. God said, God is the revealer of secrets, isn't he? Let's get back to this secret sin thing. Because God says, I'm going to reveal them to you, just me and you personally. How many of you know that to be true? Say amen. The Holy Spirit of God shows up, knocks on your door, and says, we need to talk. That's one witness. Remember what Jesus said? If thy brother sin, go to him. So the Holy Ghost shows up and says, we need to talk. I saw what you did. And I'm revealing it to you first. You see, God follows his own pattern. Thank God. Amen. Because there are things about us we don't want anybody else to know. Come on, don't make me feel bad. Raise your hand. Oh, really, Brother Mike? No, the Holy Ghost came and said, Mike, we're, I'm going to deal with some things that nobody knows about, but I'm going to deal with them. Thank you, God. But see, if you reject that, then God's going to send a preacher to your house. Or, or that preacher is going to hammer your hide to the wall on Sunday morning. And you're going to think, he knows. That's right. See, that's God working in a church. You ought, you ought to thank God for a pastor that God will do that with. But if that doesn't work, you just mark my word. God's going to expose you for who you are to a lot of people. Because God reveals the secret things. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my what? A secret place can be polluted. And who's going to go into it? Robbers. Who's the thief? Satan. He's a thief and a robber, isn't he? And he's going to go into the secret place and defile it. In the Old Testament, what was the only place secret from the Israelites? 
Only one man knew what it was and what was in there. What was it? It was the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was. Are you with me? And remember what that is. That's the cell nucleus where the DNA is stored. Get it? There it is right there. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it where? In a secret place. What did we just say was the secret place? It was the most holy place, the cell nucleus. Do not put an idol in your secret place. And the people shall answer and say, Amen. that they would desire, now here it is, the book of Daniel, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. And when I got to this point, I'm going, Daniel knew the secret. Daniel knew the secret. And, Deut and Daniel chapter 2 is the story of Nebuchadnezzar's image. Remember? The head of gold, the chest of silver, the thighs of brass, the legs and the feet of iron, but the toes, iron, mingled with clay. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time going into a lot of detail about Bible numerics and so on, but it means a lot. The fourth kingdom is where we're going to concentrate on. The iron mixed with miry clay. Think of something in the Bible that's made out of clay. You, aren't you? Okay? Okay? We're made out of clay. The clay represents man. This fourth kingdom is not a kingdom of this world. This number four always points you to, watch this, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's where Paul said our real wrestling takes place. Amen? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the four powers, those, that fourth kingdom. The fourth beast that Daniel sees is diverse from the other three. He is not of this world. He is from the spirit realm. I don't have time to go into that tonight. Study this. I have a video coming out just on the number four, and I explain it in detail. When I have it out, I want you to get a copy of it so you'll know. But this fourth kingdom is all about a spiritual kingdom that dominates planet earth. Is there not a spiritual kingdom that's trying to dominate your life? Is there a spiritual kingdom that's trying to dominate your home? A spiritual kingdom trying to dominate your church? Is the one trying to take control of the country? Then why not take control of the entire earth? You believe it? Say amen. amen. That's what the number four leads you to. That's what this fourth kingdom is all about. And what does it say about this kingdom? That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43. He's explaining the fourth kingdom and why the toes are part iron and part clay. He said, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with what? And the seed of men is what? your DNA. Right? The seed of men is your DNA. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Now I'm going to show you in every Masonic cell. I can read symbols now like they're an open book because I know the secret. Once, that, once I knew the secret, you can't hide a symbol from me. I'll tell you what it is. And I'm going to tell you what this is. Albert Pike, watch this. Now, this fourth kingdom is, this, is the supernatural realm. Okay? And it's this, this satanic, demonic realm. That's the fourth kingdom. So think about this. Albert Pike said that this symbol here, the compass, represents the heavenlies, the heavenly realm. This symbol here represents the earthly realm. And notice that they are fused together. They're, they're not separated. They are joined together. Does everybody see that so far? This is they, and this is the seed of men. This is the heavenly and the earthly. The male 
the female. Get it? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. There is a story. You can believe it or not. It says, Genesis chapter 6, that the sons of God came and took the daughters of men to be wives. Watch this. The sons of God mingled with the daughters of men. Makes sense, doesn't it? We're going to show you some more. Albert Pike said, The square, therefore, is a natural and appropriate symbol of this earth. The compass is an equally natural and appropriate symbol of the heavens. The compass is the hermetic symbol of the creative deity male and the square of the productive earth or universe. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Heaven mingled with earth. Have you ever heard that before? Let's, let's move on. Now, heaven, all of the ancient pagans worshipped the sun god, didn't they? The Indians did, the Mayans did, the Greeks did, the Romans did, the Babylonians did, the Sumerians did, the Egyptians did. Everybody worshipped the sun god for some reason. But it's not the god of the universe, isn't it? So if it's not the god that you and I know, it's a false god, it's a devil, isn't it? And the sun is where? The sun is not on earth, is it? It's in heaven. They also worshipped a mother goddess of the earth. She is called Gaia, Isis, Ashtaroth, Ishtar, Easter, Diana, Venus, Mother Nature. And she is worshipped as a goddess because she is productive. She is fruitful. So watch this. I want you to think about this. What happens when the sun meets with the productive earth? It produces Green things. Get it? Doesn't it? How do trees grow? How does grass grow? The sun meets the earth. And, that's, and the trees and the grass of the earth are the children of the union of the sun and the earth. Yo, do you understand that? Now, see this image here? It's hanging from a tree. And somebody's about ready to take it. Think of a story in the Bible. 46 words that the devil spoke to Eve. Who? That he spoke to Eve trying to get her to partake of the child that was produced by the union of the sun and the earth. This is deep stuff. Are you getting it? Okay. You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under what? They worshipped the trees, didn't they? They worshipped under the trees. They worshipped where? In the groves. What were groves? There was little gardens that they planted and they put an image of a mother holding a little baby. Have you ever seen that one before? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? That which was is that which shall be. There is no new thing under the sun. And God said to the Israelites, if you see one of those, destroy it. I dare you. <laughs> okay? But he said, that's an abomination in the earth. Yet within three days, now watch this. Fruit hangs from a tree, doesn't it? I want you to think of things in the Bible that hang from a tree. Pharaoh shall lift up thy head from off thee, and thou shalt hang on a tree. Deuteronomy 21, And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree. He that is hanged is accursed of God. That's why God did not want them to eat it. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the ending of the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stones that remaineth unto this day. What does that sound like to you? Jesus hung on a tree. 
And they took him down at even, and they put him in a great pit, and they rolled a great stone. But that stone was rolled away. Amen? See, Jesus conquered his enemies that are cursed by taking on the curse for us. Somebody say amen. amen. Woo, I like it. I dig it. Masons, when you join their lodge, the very first thing that they have you do in the first initiation is put a rope around your neck. It's called a cable toe, and it has three strands, and I'll show you why tomorrow night. What are they acting out in the Masonic Lodge? The cursed one who hung from a tree, not Jesus, the Antichrist. Sons of God, daughters of men, the heaven principle, the earth principle, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they bear children to them. That is, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That happened in Genesis chapter 6. You can believe that or not. That's exactly what happened. Seed equals what? Genetics. And so here's what God said in Genesis 3. The Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Who? The serpent and the woman. And between thy seed. Now who is her seed? It's Christ and us. But it's Christ, right? Literally, was Christ born of a woman? Literally. Then why isn't this literal? It is. The seed of the serpent is always rec uh, recognized in the Bible by called, being called children of Belial. Here it is. Certain men, children of Belial, sons of Belial, children of Belial, sons of Belial, the sons of Belial as thorns. What was the ground cursed with? What did Jesus wear on his head? What was Paul? A messenger of Satan. An angel of Satan to buffet him. What was it? It was the son of Belial. Children of Belial, you are of your father the devil. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, thou child of the devil. Is this just simply metaphorical language meant to draw us into imaginations? No. God is telling you that this, there's a war going on between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. You believe it or not. Have you ever seen this symbol before? In its simplest form, it's called the Star of David. David doesn't have a star. You will not find the Star of David mentioned anywhere in the Scriptures. Will you? And by the way, did God ever tell us to draw out symbols of Him? Images. He said stay away from them, didn't he? So I think we ought to. So let me show you what this means. This is pointing up like the square and the compass. Sons of, notice the opposites here. White, dark. White, dark. Up, down. Sons of God, daughters of men. This is the secret. They are mingling themselves with the seed of men. See this serpent around this with his tail in his mouth? See that? That's called the Ouroboros. Guess what it means? This is, they call it a secret of immortality. The symbol of immortality. The symbol of eternal life. Now that doesn't look like salvation to me, does it? By the way, that's a dragon, a serpent. The devil does not have the key to immortality, although he tried to tell Eve that he had it. Ye shall not surely die. He tried to tell her that she would live forever if she listened to him and not her husband, whose name was Adam, who was a picture of Jesus Christ. Get it? So guess what this means? Albert Pike says, the mouth of the dragon represents the woman. Open. The tail represents the male. This is the earth this is the heavenly. Sons of God mingle with the daughters of men. How many of you see that? Wow. This symbol is described as, is, has a strong relation to what is known as the androgyny. You know what androgyny is? 
It's a combination of male and female in one body. Sons of God, daughters of men. The androgyny is united male and female principles together. This is the prime primordial end to the human endeavor. Did you get that? This is where they say mankind is headed in his next phase of evolution. He is headed toward the day where he is sons of God mingled with daughters of men. The fusion of the opposites, the heavenly realm and the earthly realm. The reunion, the reunion which births totality and creation. It is not unlike the idea of androgyny, which is a duality complete, a return to wholeness. Here it is again. Sons of God, daughters of men. Sons of God, daughters of men. Look at that. We're going to find out what that means in a little bit. Have you ever seen the yin-yang symbol? Okay. The yin-yang symbol is this Chinese symbol, and we're going to see it again in a little bit, is the Chinese concept of, e of um, balance. You ever heard somebody in karate saying, you need to find balance? Right? You saw Karate Kid? <laughs> He's being taught a pagan, new age, from hell concept of balance. That concept of balance refers to, in, in their simplistic form, they say there's a little good in all evil and a little evil in all good. Now, is that correct according to the Bible? The Bible says, what fellowship hath light with darkness? None. So this concept is the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men united together. That's what this is. This image here, remember these two pillars, what are they? Jacob and Boaz. I'm telling you all the Masonic symbols. The 23 chromosome pairs. Jacob and Boaz. See this twining around here? What is that? DNA. DNA. We have uh, these four elements here, which I didn't cover tonight, but I do cover in another video. They represent the four chambers of the heart, or they represent the throne of God. Because here you have a man, a lion, uh, an ox, and an eagle. Those are the four cherubims that supported the throne of God in Ezekiel chapter 1. And who wants to sit on the throne of God? Satan does. Here's the square and compass. Sons of God, daughters of men. Here we have the keystone of Freemasonry. Now what did we say last night that DNA was? It's a crystal, so therefore it's a stone. The keystone of Freemasonry is what unites this side with this side. We have opposites here. We have the sun and the moon. They are opposites. Night and day. Drawn together by the keystone. It's DNA. That's what that means. The checkerboard floor. Dark and light intermixed together. Sons of God, daughters of men. I could go on this all night. Daniel said, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with iron clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Have you seen that symbol before? Carpenter's Union. Sons of God, daughters of men. I even found this in the Bible. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He maketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with the planes and he marketh it out with the compass. And maketh it after the figure of a man. What's this carpenter doing? He's making an idol. Do you, how many of you believe the Bible reveals all the secrets? Raise your hand. Amen. Washington, D.C. This image here is called an obelisk. It is a symbol of the male. The God, Osiris, Satan. On top of the Capitol building here is a statue of a goddess. How many of you knew that? No wonder the capital's all messed up. If I were president, I'd get rid of that thing. I'd make a lot of people mad and be assassinated. But I would get rid of it. So watch this. The street layout of Washington, D.C. forms a square and compass. This point here points you to the male. This point here points you to the female. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Sons of God, daughters of men. See the two heads here? 
Albert Pike says one face is one way and one face is another way because th this represents the heavenly principle, the male. This represents the earthly principle, the female, and they're joined together in one body. Sons of God mingle with daughters of men. And what is this called? A brotherhood. I'm not saying if you belong to a union, you're going to hell. Okay? It's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that there are a lot of secrets in trade unions. How many of you believe that? Say amen. amen. Secret deals. Baphomet. The image of, of the God of the Knights Templar and Freemasons. He has female and male parts. One hand points up, one hand points down. He is the androgyny. He is the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men in one body. And who is this? It's Lucifer himself, isn't it? We're going to talk more about these arms a little bit later on. On his arms he has salve and coagula. This is the process of alchemy. Alchemy was the ancient secret concept of trying to turn lead into gold. But you can't turn lead into gold, can you? Can't do it. So it didn't really mean lead into gold. It meant turning humans into immortals, gods. That's what alchemy was about. And the process is you have to dissolve the old man first so you can coagulate into a new creature. That's what that means. That's a statue of George Washington in Washington, D.C. What does it look like? You think there's a conspiracy in our nation's capital? Remember what DNA looked like? So if I show you Masonic symbols that look like ladders and they reach from earth into heaven, what are you looking at? DNA. DNA. Mingling heaven or joining heaven with the earth. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. How many of you understand this so far? You're seeing it now in all the symbols. There it is here. And even here in this Masonic symbol, they put angels ascending and descending on it. They're telling you it comes right out of the Bible. What does the Tower of Babel look like? And what were they trying to do with it? Wow. And so I counted. I counted from my King James Bible. I've, it's, listen, that Bible has never, I've, I've never been able to prove it wrong yet. Rule number one, there are no mistakes in the Bible. Rule number two, if you think you found one, refer to rule number one. Because you are not smarter than God who gave us a gift by way of His Holy Spirit. And that gift was the ability to translate unknown tongues. And He said, if a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two and at the most three. You know how many original languages there were in the Bible? Three. Hebrew, Greek, and a little bit of Aramaic. And then He said, let one translate. And it's a gift, isn't it? I believe God knows how to translate Bibles. It's never failed. So I went to Genesis 11, Dennis, and I counted the exact number of words that were spoken by man as they build the tower. 46 of them. It's never been wrong yet. Does anybody know what May Day is? What a Maypole is? A Maypole represents the male. And the girls dance around it as they take their ribbons and twine it around the Maypole. It's a fertility dance. That's who the May Queens are. How many of you remember a song from Led Zeppelin? called Stairway to Where. And does, do they mention the May Queen in there? And do you think Led Zeppelin was being inspired by the Holy Spirit? 
No. They, one of the guys, I think it was Jimmy Page, moved into Aleister Crowley's mansion and he wrote Stairway to Heaven while under I, I, in a trance. And she is buying your Stairway to Heaven. This is Rosalind Chapel. I talk about that in, a, in the Da Vinci Code video that I have. Rosalind Chapel was, Chapel was built by the Knights Templar. They put Freemason symbols all in it. And they built a, a pillar called the Apprentice Pillar. What does it look like? And, and Rosalind Chapel is supposed to be a rebuilding of Solomon's Temple. What is Solomon's Temple? And the pillar reaches from the ground to the ceiling. From the earth to the heaven. That's the secret. If you read the Da Vinci Code or see the movie, then you know the secret. Masonry talks about a winding staircase in the temple. And that when you reach the top, you reach the enlightenment of Freemasonry. Oh look, here's Jacob and Boaz. And here is a globe of the earth and a globe of the stars. What are stars? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Do you believe it now? Huh? You believe the secret from the Bible? I went to the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C., and the tour guide takes me, and I see a, a winding staircase. And I'm going, I know what that is. I didn't tell the tour guide that, but I know what it is. And it, there's two of them. One goes this way, and one goes that way. And they wind around to the sanctuary of the, of the temple. And so, dummy me, I'm going at the steps, and guess what I'm doing? 23 steps on this side, 23 steps on the other side. I'm not making this up. It's the secret, isn't it? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Statue of Liberty was given as a gift from French Freemasons to the American Freemasons. Guess what it has inside of it? Winding staircase. Dun, dun, dun. And this is, not, this is not liberty. This is a goddess. It's a statue. It's something God told us not to have. Do we not believe the Bible? Amen? Amen. And she holds the light of occult illumination in her hand. I saw this at the mall the other day. Rock music. How many of you believe that's inspired by the devil? Amen? Amen? And a stairway of DNA going from earth into heaven. Which you ought not be listening to. Bless God, I ain't listening to that junk. Me and Conway Twitty, I don't go for that stuff. <laughs> in China, this secret's everywhere. Chinese always had a concept that at one point, listen to this, at one point the gods came down to the earth and that the kings, the emperors of China were all called the sun gods because the emperors of China believed that they were the offspring of the gods who mated with their women. And they have a temple in China called Heaven on Earth Temple. Because they believe that is the place where the gods ascended, where the sons of God came and married the daughters of men. You see, every culture in the world has a story that says that gods came down and mated with women and created the titans, the giants, and something else. And I'll share it with you later. Have you ever seen this symbol before? The cross and the crown. It's not Christian. You don't need symbols. You got a Bible full of them. Amen? The male, the female. Sons of God mingle with the daughters of men. It's outside of a church in my town. You know what that's saying? If you're a Mason, you're welcome here. They know what it means. I didn't know it for years until I went, oh, I know what that means. I did one of those, John. Oh, I know what that means. Out in front of the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry, there are two sphinxes. Albert Pike says they represent Jachin and Boaz. What is Jachin and Boaz? The 23 chromosome pairs in the human cell where the DNA is stored. And what is a sphinx? It's the mixture of a man with a beast. 
What is the devil? He's a dragon. He's a serpent. He's a beast, isn't he? Think about it. What are the cherubs? They're heavenly beasts. John said, I saw the four what? Not the four humans. I saw the four beasts in heaven. Lucifer is a beast. A lot of those cherubims, they are beasts. They are angelic beasts. And the sphinxes represent the cross between humans and those angels. You see the Da Vinci Code? See this symbol and this symbol. What does that represent? And what does that represent? The union of the male and the female, the sons of God with the daughters of men. Leonardo da Vinci knew this. He knew the secret or was part of this secret society. Some say it's the Priory of Zion. Some say that, that that didn't exist. But I'm telling you, da Vinci knew it because in his painting of the Last Supper, this is clearly Jesus and this is clearly a woman. Supposed to be Mary Magdalene. But here's what it really represents. The sons of God, and he's mingled with her, the daughters of men. Wow. Da Vinci himself, this is his character, uh, character of John the Baptist. This is the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is the androgyny. She has female parts and a male face. This is da Vinci's face. And so is this, because da Vinci was queer. He was an androgyny. He was a male and female combined in one body. And so before he drew John the Baptist, he drew a sketch in his book called Angel in the Flesh. And it was, a, I'm not showing you the rest of it, but Angel in the Flesh had male and female parts on his body. You get it, don't you? Angel in the Flesh, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. How many of you are convinced that that's the secret? This is in a stained glass in Scotland. Jesus and a pregnant Mary Magdalene. But that's not who that is, is it? Sons of God, the daughters of men, and their offspring. A combination of the two. Here's Mary Magdalene pregnant. She's holding a skull. Why is she holding a skull? Because the skull is her husband. And guess who the skull is? <coughs> It's the Antichrist. The Antichrist, watch this, the Antichrist has a deadly head wound, right? What did Goliath get? Deadly head wound. What did, I can't remember in the book of Judges, who was it that drove the nail through that guy's skull? Pierced his skull, giving him a deadly head wound. Who was it that gave the devil a deadly wound in his head? At the place of the... It was Jesus. Isn't that cool? That's her husband. The Antichrist. The devil. And I'll, I'll show you something neat about this in a minute, all right? The list of the members of the Priory of Zion. From our video on the Da Vinci Code, from the Da Vinci Code movie and the book and all this stuff. We have Blanche Devereaux. I've talked about her. Nicholas Flamel. Leonardo Da Vinci. Robert Flood, Isaac Newton, uh, Victor Hugo, who wrote uh, Beauty and the Beast, Claude Debussy, a composer, and a man by the name of Jean Cocteau. He was a French artist and film director. Jean Cocteau named himself, at, be, being on the list of the grandmasters of the Priory of Zion, the men who knew the secret, named himself Jean the 23rd, or John the 23rd. John Cocteau, John the 23rd, had a student training under him into the realms of the occult. This man later went on to become Pope John the 23rd. And why did he name himself the 23rd? 23 chromosome pairs, where the secret is. JFK. I don't know who killed him, but I think I know what it was about. It was a ceremony. Here you have the obelisk. The symbol of the male. Okay? Dealey Plaza, this is where the grassy knoll was where a Masonic temple used to be. The grassy knoll forms, the street layout forms an obelisk. And this is where Kennedy was killed. In the movie JFK, this man is telling this man that he knows who did it. And he says, who is it that had the means to do it? Who is it that had the means to cover it up? Who? Who? And then they stop and they show you a picture of this. It represents the Masons. Guess how old John F. Kennedy was when he was killed? 46. Yeah. 
What is that? Sons of God. Daughters of men. Remember the rose on the cross? The rose is a, is a symbol of secrecy. In the chapel, in um, Rosalind Chapel, the ceiling is covered with stone roses. Sub rosa means anything done in secret. This was a secret meaning in this movie. Sub rosa. Beauty, the beast. The beast, sons of God, mingling with the daughters of men. Alchemy symbols. Male and female, together in one body. Male and female, together. Sons of God, daughters of men. Sons of God, daughters of men. Do you see any DNA here? These are alchemical. These are hundreds of years old. What are these? Everybody say cross. cross. Well, y'all are pretty smart. <laughs> these are symbols of the cross. Remember what we found out last night about the cross. What is it? It's our chromosomes where the DNA is stored. Okay? So when you see something that looks like a cross, and Albert Pike, this is the very first chapter of Morals and Dogma, in Albert Pike's book of Freemasonry. So what are we dealing with here? Now that you know the secret, you know what this is, don't you? It's an X chromosome where the DNA is stored. That's the secret. That's where the secret is. The Knights Templar had a secret. They are the progenitors of modern Freemasonry. Did you see National Treasure? I'm going to show you some more about that tomorrow night. But the Knights Templar discovered a secret, didn't they? And they always hid what the secret was. And X marks the spot. Now you know. I went into the Mother Lodge. That's what I found. It's in their temple. X marks the spot. Did you ever see that show? I talk about that in other videos. Okay? It's about an alien-human hybrid. That's what it's about. You ever seen this one? The X-Men. These are men who have had their DNA altered. So now they have superpowers. They are the supermen. They are the divine race. They are gods on the earth. And that's why they're called X-Men. See the two X's there? Does anybody know what a nexus is? It is the point at which two things converge and combine together. Isn't that something? Brand names. Okay? Who inspired this? Okay? What is that? Who'd we say the skull was? Yeah. And what is this? The X chromosomes where the DNA is stored. You get it now? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's what that means. Those are skull and crossbones. All brand. The keys of the papacy. They're the crossed keys, right? It's an X chromosome. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow night. All these crosses and Albert Pike's morals and dogma, he was talking about the cross being a symbol of the secret, the secret of Freemasonry. Here's one here. What does this look like to you? See all these swastikas? This is an ancient temple floor discovered. All these swastikas here. This goes back way before Adolf Hitler. It was a symbol of immortality. It represented the chromosomes of the human body. See the contrasting colors here. Dark and white. Dark and white. Sons of God, daughters of men. The chromosomes. Um, here we have the yin-yang symbols. Here. Sons of God, daughters of men. What do we see here? What is that? That is the barracks in the naval base in San Diego, California. Here's the New World Airport. Lies in New World Order. Denver, Colorado. Here, 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 here. They just built that thing in the 90s. And they built it like that on purpose. The cross on a map is from the Knights Templar. It shows you the secret. The fleur-de-lis up here at the top. And by the way, there are 32, 33 points here. This is called a rose compass. Remember what rose meant? It was a symbol for secrecy. 
We're going to talk about that tomorrow night. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my what? Secret place. Now we know what it means. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, what goes on upon its belly? A serpent. Them shall ye not what? Why? Because they creepeth. And Jude warned us, for certain men crept in where? What did they do? They slithered in. He was talking about the false prophets of the last days, folks. And they've crept in unawares into our churches and our denominations, haven't they? Wow. God said, thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers what? He said, don't mingle the seeds in the vineyard. Look at that. I am the vine, ye are the branches. It's DNA. Know ye not that you're the temple of God? Uh, and that if any man does what? Defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Jude warned that these guys would defile the flesh. Psalm 139, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. In thy book all my members were written. Now, this is God's book. And last night we found out, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Two rules concerning the book that God wrote. You cannot add to it. You cannot take away from it. So when they mingle themselves with the seed of men, that is the ultimate adding to God's word, isn't it? Makes sense, doesn't it? God said, don't do it. And why did he say, by the way, if they can mingle and mess up this book, then they're on the way to this one. If they change my DNA, they change the creature. So what happened when they started changing the Bible? The Bible is the DNA of the church. It's its life, isn't it? The Bible determines what the church is. And so when they started changing the DNA of the church, they changed the church. Wow. You know the secret, don't you? And how dangerous is this? Animal-human hybrids spark controversy. Genetic scientists right now, guess what they're working on? They're working on ways to change the human DNA by adding beast DNA. Cloned pigs modified for use in human transplants. Animal-human hybrids, embryos, a reality. Is this cow an animal-human hybrid? This, I found this this morning. Creation of genetically modified monkey heralds health revolution. Why would they try to change your DNA? Because your grandma has Parkinson's disease and they can cure that now if they can change her DNA by adding a piece of monkey DNA in where her defective DNA is. But now she's not your grandma. She is a beast. Because if it's not all human, it's not human. Amen. And if it's not all the Bible, it's not the Bible. Right. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Transhumanism. This is the New Age movement. The New Age movement teaches that, watch this, the gods are going to descend down to earth and they're going to bring man to his next phase of evolution. Transhuman, above human gods. Ye shall be as gods, part of the 46 words that the serpent spoke to Eve. Have you seen these symbols? The yin yang here, here, what's that? It's the next chromosome, isn't it? Hybrids mingled together. BMW advertisement. The yin yang. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, and they say a perfect balance. In a courthouse, there is a woman, a goddess, holding a pair of balances in her hand. Albert Pike says that's a Freemason symbol. It doesn't represent the equality of man. It represents the balance. The sons of God mingled together with the daughters of men. That's what it represents. And she's holding three fingers up. I'll tell you why tomorrow night. You got to come tomorrow night. <laughs> tell me what you see. A Sprite can. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hybrid. Mingled together. What do you see? Fused together. Wow. What do you see? Fusion. The symbols fuse together. What do you see? 
If you drink that, you are loopy. <laughs> Amen? You see, the, you see them fused together? Branding. And remember, these people are being led by familiar spirits, aren't they? Okay? Synergy. You know what that means? Two things that cannot exist without each other. They, they join together so they can work together properly. That's what synergy is. And this concept is in the New Age movement, and now it's moving into the church. This is synergy, First Baptist Church in Tulsa. See the symbols? One pointing up, one pointing down. Guess what? Sons of God, daughters of men. The Synergy Church, a strategy for integrating small groups and Sunday school. Synergy Student Ministries. What do we have here? Gillette Fusion. See the symbol? Fuse together. Fusion Church. Better together. You get it? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. And see this? I'm going to tell you what it means tomorrow night. You're close. You're very close to knowing what it is. Pre will bad is Sunday school literature. The New Age movement is moving into every facet of Christianity. Then the Pentecostal charismatic movement and the latter rain movement, the Elijah movement, the dreams and vision movement. Here's a group that promotes that. And they have a book called Your Unique DNA and Your Belief System Hold the Keys to Success. They're telling you that the secret to living the abundant life of Christianity is in your DNA. That's scary. Here's a book called The Secret. Have you heard of that? Book and a video called The Secret, marketed to business executives. It's called The Law of Attraction. It's actually witchcraft. It says that if you speak the right words and have the right positive thoughts, then by magic, those things will come to you. If you want to be rich, then you speak wealth out of your mind. That's called the law of attraction. The law of attraction actually has to do with the secret. Because in order for these gods to descend upon mankind and mingle themselves, man has to ask for it. You see, the, be the false prophet doesn't make everybody receive the mark. He causes them. They do it of their own free will. Two men are standing before the Israelites. One is the Son of God. The other one is the Son of the Devil. He is Barabbas. He is a murderer. He is pulled out of prison. Do you get it? The beast rise, rises up out of prison, doesn't he? And Pilate said, choose. Wow. So you know what the law of attraction is. It's witchcraft. So who said this? You have to begin speaking words of faith over your life. Your words have enormous creative power. The moment you speak something out, you give birth to it. This is a spiritual principle, and it works whether what you're saying is good or bad, positive or negative. Who said that? Take your pick. They both believe it. Joel Osteen and Joyce Myers, who lives in my county, practicing sorcerers. And they're leading millions of people and to receiving a mark on the right hand or forehead. Let me hear you say amen. amen. Here is uh, in the Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, which is everything God told the Jews not to learn from the Canaanites that they learned, they incorporated into the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah has a principle called Adam Kadmon, which is the new human, a God human. And they talk about full DNA activation. This is all through the New Age movement where they say in, in the New Age, when we turn ourselves into gods, we're going to activate our DNA. Guess what they're referring to? Spiritual DNA. This is from a, a pastor's magazine talking about spiritual DNA. He says, I am no longer merely confess that I am the righteousness of Christ. I realize that with his DNA in me through his blood, I could be nothing else. I realize the attributes of his DNA reside in me, whether dormant or active. He is teaching people that what the Gnostics taught everybody is that they have a God on the inside of them. And if they perform the right rituals, this God will come out of them and they will be gods. New Age terms, reformation, synchronicity, great awakening, tuning in, transformation, community, connectedness, entry point, paradigm shift, synergy, center point, 
Guided imagery, imagination, convergence, elevation of man. These are all new age terms. These are all these terms are in the church right now. All of them. Paradigm shift refers to the day when man becomes God on this earth and becomes immortal. That's the day when they seed themselves with the seed of men. And so there's a conference coming up called Shift. It refers to the paradigm shift. This is the leaders of the emerging church that I warned you about two years ago. They're leading everybody into this new age concept. This guy is speaking at the Free Will Baptist D6 conference this September. And he believes in the coming paradigm shift. What does he believe in? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. One of their speakers, Brian McLaren, said, we are in a time of transition. Rethinking, reimagining, re-envisioning. A time for asking new questions and seeking answers that are both new and old, fresh and seasoned, surprising and familiar. What does it mean in today's world to be a follower of God in the way of Jesus Christ? He's taking people to the paradigm shift. Take a look at this symbol for a minute and tell me what you see. Do you see the secret? Connection. Sons of God. Daughters of men. This is Connection Church. Leonard Sweet and Rick Warren. Leonard Sweet is a New Ager posing as a Christian. Rick Warren supports this guy. Leonard Sweet wrote a book called Quantum Christianity. And in it, he endorses the union of the human and the divine. And he calls it Kundalini's fire. Remember what Kundalini was? The serpent coiling up your spine, giving you enlightenment. How many of you believe in aliens, UFOs? I don't believe in beings from other planets. I believe in devils. And guess what the whole alien thing is about? New Ager Jack Purcell channeling a spirit called Lazarus says, we want to talk to you of love. This is the aliens talking. We want to talk to you of love. We want to blend with you. We want to blend our energy with yours so we can touch each other, so we can work together. That's synergy. That's connection. New Age mystic Ken Carey channeling angels. He says, we are here to merge, to blend with your human egos, to help your race become the central guidance system of a vast new being. Have you ever seen this TV show? Heroes. It's about people who have different DNA than you and I, and they are gods. You know this name heroes, you know where it came from? It came from Greek mythology. The heroes were the offspring of the gods who mated with human women. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. How many of you believe it so far? John Mack wrote a book on alien abductions. He said a new life form must evolve if the human biological and spiritual essence is to be preserved. It is difficult to ignore the fact that the UFO abduction phenomenon is taking place in the context of a planetary crisis of major proportions. Abductions seem to be concerned primarily with two related projects. Changing human consciousness to prevent the destruction of the Earth's life and a joining of two species for the creation of a new evolutionary form. David Jacobs in The Secret Life said, all the evidence points to there, the aliens, being here to carry out a complex breeding experiment in which they seem to be working to create a hybrid species, a mix of human and alien characteristics. From Alienshift.com, once one person writes, they told me they were there on a mission, the aliens. They belonged to a brotherhood of civilizations with others from which they had received specific orders for our world. They pointed out that we have always been guided indirectly by certain great personalities, like Christ, who they believe, who have passed through our civilizations throughout history. These so-called masters, some approaching divinity, have always had contact with the extraterrestrials. I had a feeling that these beings had been, on, had been sent on a mission pertaining to the evolution of our planet. That's what the whole alien conspiracy is all about. It all ties in with the New Age movement and Freemasonry and everything else that we've talked about. Here's a movie out called The Day the Earth Stood Still. See the symbol? The fusion of the two. Do you know what it's about? It's about how the aliens come down and they're going to destroy our planet unless we 
change unless we evolve. You get it, don't you? That's what it's about. You know what genies are? Genies from Arabian myth are demons who can beget young on mankind. Genies were gods who made it with human women and produced the heroes of Arabian myth. Remember a movie? What was the theme song to this movie? A whole new world. Your kids did. Your grandkids did. They saw it. Now, this very quick... What time is it? What time is it? 12 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Good, because I'm almost done. We're going to go to the Bible now just for a minute. I want you to think about this. They're all teaching. They're all teaching. The Freemasons, the New Agers, the UFO people, the, all the weirdos of the world. They're all teaching that the gods are going to descend upon mankind and help him to his next phase of evolution. That's what they're all... How many of you see that so far? You see that in everything we've seen. <clears throat> Guess what really is going to happen? These angels are not going to come down of their own free will. They're kicked out. Revelation chapter 12 tells you when this event's going to happen. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And it's at this time the New Agers are perceiving that when these angels, when they see these angels falling, they think they're floating down but they're falling. And the New Age is teaching that when they come down, they're here to help us. That sounds like the government, right? Hi, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we have this stimulus money we would like to give you. That's when this is going to happen. How many, of you, how many of you get it so far? At least just a tiny piece of it, but you, you're pretty sure that that's what's going to happen. Okay, now I spent two hours telling you the secret and trying to make it make sense to you so that you can see it not only from the Bible, but you can understand that there doesn't seem to be a realm in our life right now that in some way is not trying to promote or market this concept to people. It's everywhere. It's even in the church. So your best, I mean your best way... I was going to say bet, but it's not a bet. Your best way is just to stick with the book. Because men lie. Some do it and they don't know about it. They're just, they're just ignorant. They just didn't know. I've preached things that I've gone, what in the world was I doing? But your best way is to just stick with the old book. You can't trust men. I told you that last night. Can't trust men. And if you're sitting here tonight after two hours and you don't buy a thing I'm selling tonight, then I challenge you, go to the book and ask God, God, was my cogger telling the truth? And if, I, and if you find out that I'm not, and if I find out that I'm not, I will repent. Because I'm not about me. You ought to know that by now. I'm not about me. I'm about this. And, base, and the discovery of the greatest secret that mankind has held for 6,000 years. God reveals it all. So let me ask you a question. Let's get back to reality tonight. What is it that you're wanting to ask God? What is it that you're really wanting to know? You know what I think? You know what I always tell my people? See, I believe in the simplicity of Christ. If you go to these New Age churches, they will make it hard for you to attain this level of, of perfection that you think that you ought to get to as a Christian. You'll never reach it this side of heaven. Do you believe that? Say amen. You're not perfect now and haven't been perfect. You're not going to be perfect until we shed off this old flesh. But I try to keep things pretty simple for my church. I give them two things. Prayer and Bible reading. Prayer and Bible reading. So, Brother Mike, we're having a problem. You know, what, you know what I think you ought to do? I think you ought to pray and I think you ought to get in the scriptures and, and you'll find the answer there. In fact, if you pray, God will lead you to the scriptures and you'll find the answer there. How many believe that? That's, see, that's simple, isn't it? You don't, need, you don't need a bunch of psychology. You, you don't need the, the psychologist behind the pulpit telling you seven tips on how to be successful at this. You don't need that. You just need to pray and read your Bible. That's your thing. 
And so I'm asking you tonight, the greatest secret that mankind has ever tried to keep that is not written down anywhere, God shows it in the Bible. So let me ask you, what is it that you, want, you would really like to know from God? What is it that you would really, really like to know from God? If you, God said, God said, he promised, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Do we believe that? You pray, and then you read, and God will show you.